The first one which I'm going to talk about is the pair trading. So if you have noticed, we had optimizer, manager, architect. So optimizer was the place where we have, we can find the unique strategies, option strategies for your forecast. Architect is a place where we can do the sensitivity analysis. We can have the whatever, what if analysis to be done, feasibility study, seeing the payoff, if we change the IV, if we change the expiry. Pair trading is one of the unique tool. So pair trading people have been doing for a pretty long time. So it's one of the very old theory which the market participants have been doing it. And it works best when the markets are consolidating. So as a trader, you should always have couple of strategies for different market conditions. Some for a trending market, some for the sideways market, because you never know which strategy can help you sail through the difficult times. So without wasting much time, let's dive deeper into pair trading. So when you open pair trading, you will see four tabs. So that's feasibility study, test lab, scanner and watch list. So it's basically end to end the entire bouquet of pairs provided to you. Let's understand what's a feasibility test. Okay, so when you open feasibility test, what you see is a matrix. So don't get confused. So this matrix means a lot. Now let's understand what does pair trading exactly means. So the word pair means two things, right? So in this, you buy one security, you sell another security. So you are playing on the outperformance. So outperforming. So when I say I'm buying security A and selling security B, it means when the market is moving higher, the security A, which is I bought, will move more than the security B, which, which I have sold. So net net, we are making money. So it's an outperformance in the up market. Let's see if the market turns bearish. So market turns bearish. The security A falls by 5%, security B falls by 10%. So again, when I say security A falls by 5%, I'm making a loss. But when security B is falling by 10%, I'm making a gain. So net net, we are earning. So pair trading is basically a study for the outperformance. You're finding out the which security would outperform the another security. Now, there are many statistical way of doing the pair trading. So correlation has been one of the favorites of the traders. So one of the oldest and like without any brains, like people have been following the correlation. Co-integration is something which becomes very relevant when we are doing the the pair trading. So that's what is the most important thing. So when I say correlation, if we can see that the Maruti is positive and so is Infosys, there could be some sort of correlation between them. But does the price or change of Maruti will have any impact on the price change of Infosys? May not. So all pairs which are correlated are not necessarily co-integrated. So this is a very thin line of difference. We need to understand the pairs which are co-integrated and has a good correlation. So this becomes a very good study in itself. But as you know, uh, different traders have different tastes. They have different way of analysis. So here we have all three provided correlation co-integration and an advanced co-integration. So basically an advanced co-integration is a concepts proprietary model on co-integration. So we have done some turn changes in the uh, standard co-integration models. Okay. And we have devised this advanced co-integration. So you can use that also. Now, when you do a pair trading, the very 
important thing is it should be from the same sector because you just want to play the systematic risk okay so uh, sorry you have to remove the systematic risk and you have to play on that unsystematic risk so when i say from the same sector i select auto so if any news comes for the auto as a whole it will impact both the securities equally so we are trying to play on that unsystematic risk of any particular security in itself okay so pair trading is always done in the same sector so now when you look at the feasibility test the first one matrix you see the list of the sectors okay you have auto auto ancillary you have bank nifty stocks so bank nifty stocks is basically not the standard bank nifty index what the exchange has is basically contains all the banking stocks which are listed in fno so basically from the fno universe we have derived this bank nifty stock as a index and it is not the bank nifty index per se so this difference uh, it should be clear similarly the nifty stocks so all the 50 nifty stocks are there in the fno so by default those things remain the same so you have all the sectors now the first thing as a user i need to look out for like a which sector am i evaluating so if i say i say bank nifty stocks okay i say apply so now you have the metrics of all the banking stocks which are there in the fno okay so both public private everything is mixed so you have the metrics now let's understand this thing the first is the look back period so look back period is the period of days which you want to evaluate okay so right now it's based on the eod stuff so it's based on the end of the days thing so 40 day period is what we are evaluating so when i say 40 day it's a 40 trading days so approximate two months data which we are looking out for because too big a data can also dilute that divergence okay so we are looking out for a short term trading opportunities so we cannot go beyond a certain days but yes if you want to change it definitely you can change it from 40 you can make it 180 you can make it 100 is as per yours but after lot of internal back testing after lot of uh, uh, results what we have seen 40 suits a lot so that's the reason we have kept it by default 40 then say i apply it now if you look at the metrics there is a color code given to it so you have something greater than 70 which is in dark green something which is between 40 and 70 is yellow and one which is less than 40 it is red so the red will contain anything which is less than 40 or less it could be negative also so this is for the correlation preference wise we prefer something the correlation should be on the first side the green one that is greater than 70 because you see that the movements are correlated between the two instruments very low correlation as such doesn't work much okay so for someone who is just going out with a correlation as a model preference should be like to going with the green one okay now comes so you have so if you click on any of the metrics tool the chart will automatically open up okay so let me first take the metrics completely so now if you see axis bank bandhan bank correlation is 70 axis bank federal bank is green it's 76 axis ici ci is 81 so axis is just best with either federal bank icici bank then if you look at hdfc bank icici bank is 79 again is good that's it yeah sbi bank of baroda 81 okay now this is for the correlation so if i have to understand the correlation i look at the metrics i see one which are in green i'll go with that 
So I go with say HDFC ICICI Bank, seventy-nine. Now you see the chart. So you have symbol A HDFC Bank, symbol B ICICI Bank. Okay. Look back period is forty. Look back chart is two fifty. So that means the correlation is calculated taking the last forty days period, and the correlation is plotted. And this is done for the rolling. 250 days okay so you are seeing the 250 days data if you look at here you will see the entire 250 days data coming up now you can have more than that so 250 is nearly one year you can make it 1000 2000 is completely upon you so you have all the historical data okay now i go Here also we have an option of Z-score co-integration or advanced co-integration. So let's look at first the correlation. So if you look at the graph, the blue one is the ratio, the orange one is the correlation. So the correlation between HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank in this year has certainly gone higher. It has moved from like. Twenty-eight correlation to eighty-six. So the reason why we are taking the forty days is to have a view of the short-term trading. What is going on? At times we see that the two stocks are completely in sync. If one stock is going higher, then second is also going higher. We it's completely in sync. So whenever there is a deviation between them, then we know that the outperformance can come from the second security. But if we take too much of data, this deviation tends to average out. So that's the reason why we prefer to take not too less data, not too high data. So forty is a balancing figure. Okay. So now, if you look at the correlation, has been nearly seventy, up greater than seventy from March onwards. So it's a pretty good co uh, correlated instrument. Now, come the Z score. so many traders use z score in their normal trading also so basically it's a deviation from the mean okay so z score of like z score formula is completely open up so it's like a deviation from the mean uh, divided by the what is the standard return so you have the z score now if look at the yellow color one so that's the z score band and the blue one is the ratio so the z score when the instrument is reversing from like its two standard deviation plus or minus two standard deviation that's the best opportunity to trade so there could be certain times where it could be like from one also but the best way is like you are getting better return when it is deviating from a very good support or a resistance so if you look at this chart you can see that ideally whenever it comes in the range of like a 1.8 1.2 we see that on the higher side it reverses that means hdfc falls and icici goes uh, icici or performs okay and whenever you see on the lower end it is beyond minus 2 so if you look at the graph you will see very categorically the ratio has a tendency of going below minus 2 very often okay so it beaches minus 2 and then it rebounds quite good so minus 2 to say minus 2.3 is a very good level for the on the lower end but on the above on the upper end 1.822 so we can have a look so if you are studying if you are keeping this pair in our watch list and regularly looking at the ratio whenever it's coming near 1.82 we know that ki boss this is the time we need to be alert there could be probability like hdfc bank could remain stable and icici can see a fall or both can fall in which icici can fall uh, sorry hdfc bank can fall more than the icici bank so when the ratio is falling you are selling the first instrument and buying the second instrument okay so when i am saying that in that case if hdfc bank is stable icici bank can fall if 
you can see uh, HDFC Bank is falling greater than the ICICI Bank. Or in that case, there could be case like ICICI Bank could be outperforming the HDFC Bank. So the whenever the ratio is falling, you are selling the first instrument, you are buying the second instrument. So that is the case. Whenever the ratio is reversing from the lower end, you are buying the first instrument and selling the second instrument. Clear? So whenever it comes near one, plus 1.82, we see the ratio, we see the standard z-score is reversing. In that case, HDFC Bank sell and ICSA Bank buy. Whenever it comes near minus 2 or below, it reverses from the lower end. In that case, we are having HDFC Bank buy and ICSA Bank sell. Okay, so this short-term gyrations does happen in the ratio. So you see that the short-term gyration is, this is what the entire trading opportunity of the pair is providing you. So we are trying to play on this short-term gyration. Okay, reversion to the mean. So you see that the, all the instruments are like mean reverting. The re returns are mean reverting. Okay, now let's move back to the metrics and understand the second factor that is the co-integration. So when I take co-integration and that also you have a look back period of 40. So 40 has been kept as standard. We put apply. Okay, so now the numbers look quite different. So in general, either the pairs are co-integrated or pairs are not co-integrated. So we are going with the co-integrated pairs, okay? So you will see a lot of blank places, blank spaces in the entire matrix. That means that pairs are not co-integrated. So it's better not to put our hands in those securities. So now if I look at Axis Bank, Bandhan Bank is co-integrated 99. So the levels of 90, 95, 99, there are three levels, okay? That shows the strength. So 99 is the very high co-integration. 90 is a average co-integration. 95 is like a moderate one. So preference should be the 95, 99. So the pairs are like uh, picking the pairs which are like a 95, 99. But still, if you are an aggressive trader moving with the 90 co-integration, there is no harm in that. But avoid the pairs which are not co-integrated. Now, now, as it's just 40 days, there could be probability that today the pair is not co-integrated, but after some times it does become co-integrated. So we are not taking very large data. We are taking last 40 days data, that's approximate two months data. And it's quite possible that after some time, the pair, the relationship starts becoming co-integrated. Uh, co so in that case, we can participate. So our eyes should be on the pairs which are co-integrated today for trading today. Clear? Now, say access HDFC by I click on the metrics. So don't click on the symbol, click within the metrics. Then you'll see the chart which is popping up. Okay. Now you have this shaded bars. Okay. So you see that the most of the time access HDFC banks are pretty high co-integrated. So it's been like a very good to pair across the time. So last 250 days period. Okay. Now this is the ratio chart. Now if I have to look at the how the Z-score has been behaving here, I'll change it to the Z-score. Here it is. Okay. So now on the lower end, minus 2, the range of minus 1.9 to minus 2 has been a good range. There has been a few instances where it has really gone below minus 3 also. There is like a couple of instances where we have like it's below minus 3. Yeah, it's near minus 2.75 and minus 3. But on an average, it has respected the minus 2 region. On the upper hand, it is, there are cases where it has seen the spikes above two, but majorly time you are seeing that the two has been respected. So there are gyrations and we are seeing the mean reversion. So this pair looks 
pretty decent okay now if you look at the current scenario where is it now it is at minus 1 so that means uh hdfc bank is outperforming the axis bank axis bank is underperforming the ratio is near the minus 1 so once it comes in the vicinity of minus 2 minus 1.5 to 2 we should be watchful so that could be one of the way of looking into it now if i say now for the z score the standard deviation thing the look back period we have kept as 20 so if look at the it's a standard like a bollinger band uh, formula so bollinger is basically normally it is 20 days period so z score we have kept it as 20 days part of it so this becomes a pretty like a one month behavior how the stock has been now again it's a user input you can change it the way you want so you can put the variable whatever you like so if i say i want to see last two months that's 40 period this is the 40 period so the 40 period is uh, you will see the range is uh, restricted nearly like a minus 1.5 or somewhere not much opportunity in terms of moving to the minus 2 or 2 okay so ideally for the z score we have think uh, we have kept 20 as the default okay you can reset it to make it the normal one okay now comes there is a distribution so here is the distribution of the returns so in the entire period okay so if i have to understand this thing how many instances have been like the returns have moved to 2 minus 2 3 minus 3 1 so distribution is something which is telling you that okay so if i have to look here so this particular pair has a tendency to be near like a so when it is zero that means it is near mean only and when the spikes are near the 2 or minus 2 it means that it has more tendency to be either right skewed or left skewed so you have a good opportunity lot of opportunity to trade when it's moving to plus 2 or minus 2 so this particular pair has been majorly like it's moving in the range of like a uh, between 0 to uh, 0.5 and then near minus 1 so more tendency on the lower end so whenever it comes on the lower end is better to trade it so that could be figure out from the distribution part okay now i can have the co integration uh, advanced co integration also been plotted so the on the advanced co integration also this pair is like a 99 so overall it's fitting up the criteria of like if the pair is co integrated as well as co related okay so now just we need to be watchful of the ratio okay so the first study the feasibility study is basically picking or finding the which is the best pairs for trading the current market situation based on the current thing so this is the study for as on dates so like how the pairs are moving how the all the sectors are moving how the pairs within the sectors are moving which are the correlated pairs which are the co integrated pairs and then picking that pair and seeing its historical data you have 250 plus data so you have uh, so you can go back more it's there since inception so inception of the derivatives thing so it's a good way now if i have to change it and see for say it stocks it correlation apply so not much on the green we don't have much green only it's only between 40 to 70 so not basically a very uh, good pair for the not very good sector for doing a pair trading i would rather say that let's do pharma again pharma is in fact a very low correlated st uh, stocks are there so each have their own behavior so not much into that again fmcg not really let 
metals in BFC. So metals: Tata Steel, JSW Steel, Tata Steel Sale, Nalco Sale. So there are few pockets which are worth of it, worthy to trade. So if I look at here, Nalco with Tata Steel is also sixty-eight. So near that average part of it. So selected pairs like Tata Steel, JSW Steel could be seen. Okay, now let's see whether they are co-integrated or no. No, they are not co-integrated. No, so not much in that. So it's basically meant more for the aggressive trader. So if I'm a very conservative trader and going with the a very confirmed trade, so pairs which could be a good co-integrated pairs, it should be washed out. Okay, so it's not necessary. The pairs which are not today correlated may not be there in future because we are just taking forty days period. So uh, analyzing it or reviewing the sector time and again, it's very very important because we might see that there could be a shift which is taking place, and that can give us a good trading opportunities. Okay, NBFCs. Let's see. Yeah, and we have seen there are certain pockets which are reasonably good. So, like LNT Finance has a good correlation with Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finance, Chola Finance, Equitas. Then, Equitas are Equitas has a good correlation with Ujjivan. Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finance with Chola Finance. So, there are good opportunities lying around in NBFCs, the pairs which are correlation. Let's see co-integration. So Bajaj Finance with Chola is good. With Equitas is good. ICICI Pro has a co-integration with few of the securities. So there are lot of opportunities. Also, NBFC as a sector has lot of participants. So definitely there could be very good opportunities. So keeping a watch becomes very very important here. Okay. So if I look at so an equitas, this is basically advanced co-integration, Bajaj Finance and equitas. You see that the ratios, the co-integrations are there. The ratio is presently going higher. The Z-score, if you look here, the Z-score is near the mean, so not per se. Trading part of it because we are more interested on the reversion to the mean. So the pair trading is basically like the pairs are mean reverting. So what we are more interested is to look out for the pairs which are near the minus 1.5 and below those pair or which are greater than those 1.5 and above, so that we can look out for the mean reverting. So once it comes near those zone, we can look out for. So. This entire feasibility test, do it patiently. Look at, analyze the pairs, analyze the trend, how the stock behave, how the entire ratio is behaving, and then we can take an opportunity. So this is the first section of the pair trading. That is a feasibility test. Okay. Now, when you do a feasibility test, what we can do further is basically. We can even go and open the pair or save the pair in our watch list. So you can click here. There are three dots over there. We have open in watch list. You have share. You can share this pair with any of your friends on WhatsApp, Twitter, wherever you want. On the email, you can do this thing. Okay. okay. Then come next is the test lab. So what is the test lab? Basically, test lab is your back testing tool for the pair trading. So it's basically you can back test your any system on pairs. So this is how it is being brought back. So if I have to let let us pick from thing from the feasibility only. Okay, let's do bank Nifty stocks apply. So HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank. Here we have seen. Okay. Okay. 
and share. So you can do the sharing thing. So symbol HDFC bank. Symbol to ICSI bank. Okay. Now you have the look back period. The SD levels are there. So on the first session, we are defining the pair. What is our pair? SDFC bank, ICSI bank. What is the period which I want to backtest? What is the SD condition which we are looking out for? So I'm looking at say 20 last 20 period SD. Buy SD at minus 2. So I'm buying the pair whenever it is coming near minus 2. I'm selling the pair whenever it is going to 2. Now the trade is point or reversal. So the point means whenever it touches that point, I'm initiating the trade. Or reversal means whenever it is reversing that from that point, we are initiating the trade. So reversal is ideal. So like whenever you see that there is a reversal happening, a pair would have gone below minus two and then moved above minus two. It shows that the pair is reversing. Okay. Now, if you don't want to move much into the statistics or something, that's it. You don't need to do much. So just define your system. Look at what is the look back period. What is the SD level point or reversal? That's it. You can do the back test. So the back testing shows that in the last one year, there have been the 12 occurrence. The strike rate of the pair is 66 percent. Total PNL we made is 3.3 percent. So average win PNL is 1.22, average loss is 1.61, but there are eight winners out of four. Uh, eight winners and four losers, total is 12. So this is the summary of the last one year. Now, if I have to add a condition, so if I say entry condition, I want correlation of last 40 days to be greater than 60. So I'm taking a pair only when the correlation is greater than 60. So you have this field of look back period, which is basically the days. So you can change that thing. And the value, how much is the minimum correlation you are looking out for? So this is correlation. You can add co-integration, advanced co-integration. So all these three fields, we can add it up. Okay. Uh, so I look one. So correlation is greater than 60. Target exit, I'm looking at me. You can also have a defined standard deviation. So you can say from minus two, I'm looking at for minus one or from two, I'm looking at to come to one. So it's completely a uh, user input. So ideally I say, let's say a minus at mean is what I'm looking out for. Then we can have the exit condition. So whenever the correlation of 40 falls below say 35, I want to exit. So whenever the correlation is reducing, I'm exiting. I'm back testing it. You don't have the scenario. So the conditions are not met. So this is what, so it will give you a complete structure, complete uh, analysis of the entire pair. Are the condition too tight or are there any room for improvement? So you can take the conditions, add the conditions, you can put the exit condition and you can see the entire test history. You can select for more than that. You can select for 2000 period and check it up. Okay. And if let me last, if you look at seven, eight years, the strike rate is 60. There are total only 15 cases. The total PNL is 3.6, the so profit factor is 1.4. So not very decent number. So, so uh, though the strike rate is okay 60, but the profit factor is not very high. So this way, like you can have the entire symbol A, symbol B, and you can do the entire back testing of it. Okay. So from this also, you have a, there is a complete info of given of the pairs in the info tab. And when you backtest it, you have an option to open it in the feasibility test or open or export it to the watch list. So if you open in the feasibility test, you will see the ratio coming up. You can save the pair in the watch list. So when you open in watch list, 
you have the your entire system being duplicated in the list and you can save the pair so once you save the pair is saved in the watch list and you come back to your ratio chart so this way there is a movement to and fro so between the pair trading various module you can move out you can define your system in one segment you can do the back testing if you like any pair you can save it in the watch list you can see the historical ratio in the feasibility study and do the entire analysis part of it okay the third one comes the scanner now scanner is basically like finding the pairs which are performing in today as on date so which are open which are performing today so again you have to define your system so in the sector you go and do say bank nifty stocks the condition i lay down is the same i want it on the reversal and then i scan so if you look at the scanning thing the two pairs which have come down are axis and federal bank and bandhan bank indusind bank so the first pair is a sell so it says that you sell axis bank and buy the federal bank okay the second one is a buy so it says buy the bandhan bank and sell the indusind bank so whatever action is there the action is for the first and the reverse is for the second and similarly for the second one buy the action is for the first and the uh, second one is the reverse so your you have the entire back testing part so now you can also define your system so you can have your entry conditions so i want the correlation to be greater than 60 okay and uh, let's see is there any pair coming so both the pairs are fulfilling this condition okay let's add i want co integration to be greater than 90 so i want just pair to be co integrated the strength doesn't matter so anything which is co integrated is what we see are looking out for so axis and federal bank are co integrated pairs are fulfilling the correlation thing also so this way you can have the thing you click on the pair you can open it in the test lab that means you can back test this pair and see the past result you can open in feasibility test you can see the actual plotting of graph of the ratio of the uh, statistics and see you can export it to the watch list so that it is there, there for your tracking every day tracking you can do it so you have all the permutation all the scenario what you can do so if i look at open in feasibility test so here is the feasibility test the orange you have the correlation the blue you have the ratio okay i can save it in watch list so now if i look here i go to watch list so there are multiple pairs which are saved in my watch list okay so the first one is selling of axis bank federal bank selling of nifty bank nifty so look at watch list you have the entry date you have the exit date so what has been the payoff that is been seen so exit date so it's a uh, 16th so it's there you have a entry price a 427 exit price 433 so this way you are seeing the pair 1 is giving the return of 2.88 the pair 2 was nifty and bank nifty so it was initiated on 25th exit on 30th uh, it was a negative uh, loss thing then we have this hdfc bank icsi bank hdfc sell icsi buy that was in june so which i have stored it in my watch list in june part so those are there you can create a pair in the watch list so when i do create we can have the pairs listed here you can define the system again in the watch list and you can save it directly so you don't have to so same pair we cannot uh, do a duplication so we have to delete the earlier one so this way you can have another pairs we can do it right so 
the entire pair module that are is divided in four feasibility test helps you to do the entire analysis you can see the metrics of correlation co integration pick the uh, pairs which are showing the strength click on it you can see the graph you can see the ratio chart if i look at maruti ashok lena is very low correlation and you see the deviations are it's not mean reverting very fast it moves in one direction pretty for, for a longer period okay so you can see the ratio chart you can do the uh, statistical uh, you can see the historical statistics of correlation co integration advanced co integration you can see its distribution whether it is near the mean or whether it's on the tails so you can find out that part then in the test lab you can do the entire back testing of the pairs you can define your system you can have your entry and exit condition and you can do the back testing then we have the scanner which will help you to scan through the entire sectors so just list down the sector which you want and your system condition so your sd condition when you want to exit when you want to initiate when you want to exit is there any entry condition of correlation co integration you can define those thing similarly you can define the targets stop losses and the exit conditions you can scan it so there are some uh, no possibility like if there is no trade then there would be no trend showed so not necessary all the time we will have some or the other result if the market is opportune then there would be pairs which would be coming up if it is not opportune if it is not in a proper condition then it will not so when the market is at trending we generally don't see much of the pairs when the markets are consolidating that time we see lot of pair because we see the sector rotation we see the stock rotation taking place and the watch list you can monitor your pairs as on date okay so this is from the pair trading so one of the you can say quite a lot of trader use it for the to trading the sideways market